In this video, we are going to talk about acids and bases. And we're going to look at two definitions of acids and bases. The first definition that we're going to look at is what's called the Arrhenius acid and Arrhenius base. This is really the simplest definition of an acid and base. Uh, basically, what it says is um, an acid is a compound that dissociates when you put it into water and when it dis dissociates one of the ions that it produces is a H plus ion or a hydrogen ion. An Arrhenius base is a substance that when you put it in water it dissociates and one of the ions that it forms is a hydroxide ion. So this is really the simplest definition of an acid and base. So let's look at a couple of um, acids and bases according to the Arrhenius equation. Here we have um, HCl, hydrochloric acid, aqueous, which means it's in water. And when you put hydrochloric acid in water, it dissociates. And one of the ions that it forms is a hydrogen ion. And the other ion it would form would be a chloride ion. So this, according to the Arrhenius definition would be an Arrhenius acid. An Arrhenius base would be something, the, maybe something like sodium hydroxide. When put into water, it dissociates to form a sodium ion. And a hydroxide anion. So this would be a base according to the Arrhenius definition. Uh, just one other example. Here we have a calcium hydroxide. When calcium hydroxide is put into water, it will dissociate, forming a calcium ion and two hydroxide ions. So again, this would be a definition of an Arrhenius base. The second definition of an acid and base, and this is the definition that we're going to use throughout this chapter, is what's called a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base. Um, <clears throat> a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that when put into water uh, donates or transfers a proton or an H plus ion uh, to another substance. A Bronsted-Lowry base is a substance uh, that accepts an, a hydrogen ion from another molecule. So Let's look at this hypothetical example. Let's say we have an acid HA plus some base B. The, according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, this, if this is an acid, it will donate a proton to the base, and the Bronsted-Lowry base will accept a proton. So these uh, must occur in pairs. In order to have a Bronsted-Lowry acid, you must have a Bronsted-Lowry base. So here we have our proton donor, our acid, and our base would be our proton acceptor. So if our acid loses a proton, we would end up with A minus, a, our uh, A minus, and here we have our base, which has accepted a proton, so we have a BH plus. Again, we're accepting an H plus ion, so the charge here would be a plus, and here, since our HA has lost a proton, this would be A minus. So our Bronsted-Lowry acid and base must occur in pairs. And uh, one other set of definitions, when <clears throat> a Bronsted-Lowry acid loses a proton, it forms what is called a conjugate base. And when the uh, Bronsted-Lowry base accepts a proton, it forms what is called a conjugate acid. Uh, because if you look over here, this uh, BH+, plus, this is now acidic. It has a proton which it can now donate. And the A-, minus, our conjugate base, can now accept a proton. So this is a reversible reaction in most cases. Uh, so the acid, once it loses a proton, forms a conjugate base. And the base, upon accepting a proton, forms a conjugate acid. Let's practice a couple of problems. Uh, this question says write a balanced equation for the dissociation of each of the following Bronsted-Lowry acids. So we're told that these are Bronsted-Lowry acids uh, in water. 
and you also want to identify the conjugate acid and base. Okay, so write a balanced equation showing how these dissociate um, in water and identify the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So our first acid is H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, and we're told that that is in water. Now, when that sulfuric acid dissociates, because it is a, an acid, it will donate a proton or lose a proton, and something must accept that. The water is going to accept the proton, and therefore the water will be my base, the sulfuric acid will be my acids. So my sulfuric acid has lost a proton, so it's not H2SO4, it's HSO4 because it's lost a positive charge, a proton, H2SO4 minus, let's put aqueous because that's an aqueous solution, and my water has accepted a proton, so it forms what is called the hydronium ion. So if this is my acid, this becomes my conjugate base, and if this was my base over here, then that becomes my conjugate acid. Because again, upon losing a proton, this can now is capable of accepting a proton. This is accepted one, so it can uh, lose that proton in our reverse reaction. So this is a reversible reaction. And the second part says, um, what if HSO4 minus is my acid? Well, when put into water, again, HSO4, that still has a proton that's capable of uh, donating, so this would be acidic. Uh, sulfuric acid, just this is what's called a diprotic acid because it is capable of donating two protons. Here's the first step. In the second step, it still has one more proton that it can donate. So this will be my acid. Water will act as my base. So we would form SO4 2 minus upon dissociation, that's aqueous, and again form the hydronium ion. Okay. So my sulfate ion, that would be my conjugate base. Hydronium would act as my conjugate acid. In the third acid we are asked to write an equation for is the hydronium ion. It's aqueous. When the hydronium ion is put into water, which is a liquid, it has an extra proton which it can donate to water. So my hydronium ion will donate that to water. The water, upon gaining a proton, forms hydronium ion. And my hydronium ion, upon losing a proton, reforms water. So here we would have uh, the hydronium ion here would act as my, uh, my acid. So the water would be my conjugate base. Here the water accepted a proton, so that's the base. Hydronium ion, therefore, would be my conjugate acid. And the final acid that we're asked to look at is NH4 plus the ammonium ion. We're asked to write an equation for the ammonium ion when it is put into water. Ammonium ion that has an extra proton, which it can donate, so that will uh, act as my acid. When it loses a proton, it will form a neutral ammonia, aqueous, and the water will accept that proton, forming our hydronium ion. This is a reversible reaction. <clears throat> so the ammonium ion lost a proton, so that's my acid. Ammonia can accept a proton, that's my conjugate base. Water accepted the proton, so that's my base. And on this side, since a hydronium ion can donate a proton back to ammonia, that would be my conjugate acid. Now, as you see with um, 
acid-base reactions, most of them are reversible, and so they may uh, take place predominantly in the forward or the reverse direction. So how do you know which direction the uh, the equation will or the reaction will proceed? Uh, in general, the reaction will proceed from the stronger acid, stronger base side towards the weaker acid and the weaker base side. So a stronger acid has a, a more a greater tendency to dissociate than a weaker acid. So if HA is a stronger acid than the hydronium ion, then the reaction will proceed in this example from left to right predominantly. If hydronium ion is a stronger acid than whatever HA is, then the net direction of the reaction would be from right to left. So in general, uh, reactions, acid-base reactions, proceed from this, uh, in the direction from the stronger acid, stronger base side towards a weaker acid, weaker base side. And we'll uh, discuss how to determine uh, what is the stronger acid and what's the strong, uh, weaker acid and stronger base and weaker base uh, a little bit later.